it says first clear the system of fractions and then solve by substitution. And I got to tell you, even if it didn't say clear the system of fractions, that's the first thing I'd want to do. So we get rid of those fractions by multiplying everything on both sides by the least common denominator, each equation. So we start with this one. You have a 2, a 3, and a 6. So the least common denominator the least common denominator, the LCD, is 6. So we're going to multiply everything on the left by 6, and then the only thing on the right by 6. For the second fraction, the LCD is, we got a, a, four, a 5, a 4, and a 10. So the LCD here is going to be 20. So we're going to multiply everything by 20 both sides. All right, and so when we do that, the uh, 2 goes into 6 3 times, so we have 3x. Three, 3 goes into 6 2 times, so we get minus 2y. The 6 is canceled, so we just have 5. For the second equation, 5 goes into 24 times, so we've got 4x. Four, 4 goes into 25 times, so we've got minus 5y. That's equal to uh, 10 goes into 22 times. So I've got 2 times 29, which would be 58. All right, this system of equations looks a whole lot simpler than the first one. I mean, it's still not the greatest thing in the world, because to solve by substitution, I need to solve either this equation for x or y, or this equation for x or y. And either one's going to be that easy, or one's no more easier than the other, I'll put it that way. Um, if we solve this one for y, uh, what we would have is um, subtract 3x from both sides, so I'd have negative 2y is equal to 5 minus 3x, and then divide both sides by negative 2, so I'd have y is equal to negative 5 halves plus 3 halves x, right? Because I divide 5 by negative 2, get a negative 5 halves. Divide that negative 3 by a negative 2. The negative divided by negative makes it a positive 3 halves. All right, maybe that wasn't the best one to start with, but it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. We could have solved this one for x. Perhaps it would have been a little easier. We wouldn't have the, the signs to worry with, but this isn't so bad. So I've got a solution. I've got a y is equal to this stuff. So I'm going to take this expression for y and plug it into the second equation. So the second equation is 4x minus 5y. All right, well, y we said is negative 5 halves plus 3 halves x. That's equal to 58. Let's distribute the negative 5 through the parentheses, and we get 4x negative times negative is a positive 25 over 2. Negative times a positive is a negative 15 over 2x, and that's equal to 58. All right, now let's go ahead and get rid of the fractions now, because we can't do too much else without getting rid of those fractions. So um, multiply everything by 2. This times 2, that times 2, that, and that. Now, that gives us 8x here, plus, well, the 2's cancel, so it's just 25. Here, the 2's cancel, so it's minus 15x is equal to 2 times 58 would be 116. All right, now let's see. Let's combine our like terms. 8x minus 15x is a negative 7x is equal to, and you take 116 minus 25. 116 minus 25, I think, was 91. Let's check. Whoops. 116 minus 25, yeah, 91. I just want to double check. 
Now, divide both sides by a negative 7. It x is equal to 91 divided by a negative 7 is negative 13. Okay, we've got a value for x. We're almost there. Now we want to solve for y. Well, here's the expression for y right here, so let's work with it. We know that y is equal to negative 5 halves plus 3 halves times a negative 13. So that means y is equal to negative 5 halves. Well, it's going to be 3 times 13, but it's a negative 13, so it's going to be minus 39 over 2. So that means y is equal to a negative 44 over 2. So y is equal to a negative 22. All right, so at least we don't have these fractions in our answers. So I have the solution negative 13 for x and negative 22 for y.